the grouchy nerd. All right, you antisocial weirdos, it's time to learn a game that can play at the ideal player count. One. Heat, pedal to the metal, designed by Asger Harding Granerud and Daniel Skjold Peterson and published by Days of Wonder is a push your luck hand management racing game which puts you behind the wheel of some kind of old timey race car as you zip around a track trying not to overheat. The game is played over a series of rounds against up to five automated drivers and your goal in heat, pedal to the metal, is just to win the race. To do so, you'll shift gears and play cards from your hand to determine your speed, making sure not to hit the corners too hard. Drive too hard too fast, you start to generate heat. Generate too much heat and you spin out. And it's pretty hard to win a race when you're facing the wrong direction. I assume. I have... I imagine I would just immediately die in a ball of fire if I ever tried to race a car. The game comes with two double-sided boards, each with a different race course, USA, France, Great Britain, and Italy. Choose a track or use the track cards to randomize them, but for your first game, stick with the USA track as it is the simplest. Each track is made up of a number of spaces, and each space has two spots. This thick line that goes around the track is the race line, and when your car moves into a space, it'll always move into the spot closest to the race line if able. Pay attention though, because the race line will switch sides around corners. And on the topic of corners, they have a speed limit. Come in too fast and you'll generate heat. The automated drivers you're racing against are called legends. Each corner line has a corresponding legend line, which will determine the legend's behavior around each turn. This shows the number of laps you'll race, this is the number of spaces in one lap, and this is the number of corners on the track. Choose a color and take that color's car, player mat, gear pawn, 12 basic cards, and 3 starting upgrade cards. The game board will also tell you how many heat and stress cards you'll take, in this case six heat and three stress. The heat goes here on your engine and the stress gets shuffled together with the 12 starting cards and the three starting upgrade cards to form your deck, but keep a few of the remaining stress cards close by. Your gear pawn goes here in first gear. Player cards each have a number on them, one through four, which when played will determine how many spaces you'll move. Starting upgrade cards extend that range to zero to five. Stress cards add a little bit of randomness to your drive and represent you being distracted while you're driving, probably looking at Instagram or whatever. When these are played, you'll draw a new card from your deck to replace it. It might help you or it might make you blow through a quarter too fast. And heat cards can't be played, they're just dead cards in your hand. Decide how many legends you want to race against. I would recommend at least three three for your first game or two, and then just bump all the way up to five pretty quickly. I think the game's a lot more fun when it's a bit more crowded, and it's really no more overhead for you. Then randomly place your car and one car for each bot on the starting grid, placing them one at a time. This will also determine play order, so try to do it as blindly as you can. Take the Legends game board and the 10 Legends cards and shuffle them, then place them here. Draw seven of your cards for your starting hand. And that's it. It's a really easy setup when you're playing the base game and it's not that much more complicated when you start adding in modules. Each turn plays thusly. Shift gears. Your gear determines how many cards you can play this turn. You can shift up or down one gear for free, or you can pay a heat to shift by two gears. Anytime you pay a heat, take one heat card from your engine and put it into your discard pile. If there's no heat left on your engine, you cannot shift by two. Play cards equal to your gear. You can play any card from your hand except for heat cards. Then reveal and move each car. Starting with the car in first place, you'll resolve their movement. If two cars are in the same space, the car in the spot closed closest to the race line is considered ahead. The first time you get to a legend, you'll reveal the top card of the legends deck. Every legend will use this card to resolve their movement this turn. But we're gonna come back to that. Let's take a look at your turn first. If you played a stress card, discard cards from your deck until you discard one with this symbol, which will be one of your basic cards. That card will replace the stress card when calculating how many spaces you'll move, meaning you'll move an additional one to four spaces. Then total the numbers on the cards you played, including those cards that replaced any stress stress cards. Move your car that many spaces along the track, always putting your car in the spot next to the race line when able. Cars in your way aren't really in your way, you can just move past them. However, if the space in which you need to stop has both of its spots filled with other cars, well then you are blocked and you'll have to settle for the next closest space behind them with an open spot. Again, always getting next to the race line if able. If your car was the last car to activate this round, or if you're using all six cars and yours was one of the last two to activate, you can use adrenaline to move an additional space when you move and or have an extra cooldown, which we're about to go over. Settle down. 
react by cooling down and or boosting. Cool down by discarding heat cards from your hand back to your engine, equal to the number of cooldowns you have. However, you can only do this a few ways. We already saw adrenaline, but driving in second gear allows you to discard one heat card. And driving in first gear allows you to discard up to three. In any gear, you can choose to pay one heat, again moving it from your engine to your discard pile, to boost. Boosting increases your speed and works just like a stress card. You'll discard cards from your deck until you discard a card with this symbol, which will be one of your starting cards. Move your car that many more spaces. You can optionally slipstream if your car ends up in a position either behind or next to another car. To slipstream, move your car forward two more spaces, but you can only do this once per turn. If there are cars in both of the spots in the space that you should end up in, again, move your car to the next closest space with a free spot behind those cars. Slipstreaming does not increase your speed, though. That'll be important in a moment. If you crossed a corner line, you'll check to see if your speed for the round exceeded the speed limit of the corner. Your speed is the total value of all cards, plus your boost if you boosted, plus one if you used adrenaline. It does not include any spaces you moved from slipstream. If it did not, nothing happens, move on to the next step. However, if you did speed through the corner, you'll take heat equal to the difference between your total speed and the speed limit of that corner. And if you make it through more than one corner in a round, you'll have to do this check for each corner, starting with the first. If you don't have enough heat left on your engine to pay this difference, you spin out. Take all remaining heat into your discard pile, move your car back to the first available space before the corner that spun you out. If you were in first or second gear, you're going to take an additional stress card into your hand. If you were in third or fourth gear, take two additional stress cards. Then move your pawn into first gear. It's pretty bad. You should try not to do that. Now you can choose to either save the cards in your hand for a later round or discard them from your hand to your discard pile, though you cannot discard cards with this symbol, stress cards and heat cards. You know, the two kinds of cards you the very most want to discard. Then put all the cards you played this turn into the discard pile. Last, replenish your hand by drawing back up to seven cards. If ever you have to draw, flip, or discard a card from your deck and your deck is empty, shuffle your discard pile and reset your deck, then proceed with whatever it was you needed to do. And that's it. That's your turn. Now you'll move on to resolving the next card's movement, or if you've somehow been roped into playing this multiplayer, the next person's. But now let's take a look at the Legends turn. Legends will take one of two actions as outlined on the Legends game mat, and which action they will take is based on their position in relation to the next corner and the Legend line immediately preceding it. Action A, clearing corners, happens if the Legend car in question is between the Legend line and the corner line. If so, move that car forward as many spaces as the speed limit of the upcoming corner, plus the number in the diamond above that Legends color on the current round's Legend card. Note that Legends will also cozy up to the race line when able. And if the legend has not yet crossed the legend line, it takes action B, approaching the corner. In this case, the legend opens up its throttle and hits its top speed, moving as many spaces as the number in their color's helmet on the current legend card. However, if moving that many spaces would cause the legend to cross the next corner line, you'll instead move it to the space 0 through 3 spaces away from the line, as indicated by the diamond above their helmet. If you're looking to make legends even harder, like if you absolutely hate winning games, the book recommends increasing that top speed by one or even more. Legend cars never have to worry about heat or spinning out. But they also can't slipstream, so at least you got that going for you. Hey, you want to put it all together? Let's put it all together. We're blue and we're approaching a corner, so I'm going to shift down to third so I can drop down to second or even first on the corner. I'll play a one, a two, and a three, so six will get me right up to that line. The gray car is in first, so I'll reveal the next legend card and resolve that car's movement. It's between the legend line and the corner line, so it's going to take action A, clearing corners. It moves the number of spaces equal to the speed limit of the corner, three, plus the number in the orange diamond above its helmet on the legend card, one for a total of four spaces. The green car and the blue car are in the same space, but we're in the spot closest to the race line, so we're next. We played cards with a total value of six, so now we'll move six spaces, placing us behind the gray car. We weren't in last place, so we don't get to use adrenaline, and we also have no way to cool down in the react step, so we just decide if we want to boost. 
Probably not a good idea though going into a corner. Now we can choose to slipstream because we're behind the gray car. Slipstreaming would put us here, which is a total movement of eight spaces, but our speed is still only six because slipstreaming doesn't add to your speed. However, that does push us past the corner line at a speed of six, meaning we'd take three heat cards, the difference between our speed and the speed limit. But we've already been driving kind of recklessly and only have two heat left, so if we do that, we'd spin out. So let's maybe not. Then the green car being behind behind the legend line will do action B and try to move its top speed of 15 spaces. That's obviously way too many spaces, so it will instead move to the space with the matching orange diamond value, in this case the two. The yellow car, on the other hand, is going to let it rip, moving its entire top speed of 11, landing in the same space as our car, but in the outside spot. Play continues in this way until the cars cross the finish line as many times as the number of laps indicated on the board. For the USA track, it's two. Whichever car crosses the finish line on a final lap wins. If two or more cars finish in the same round, the winner is the car that's farthest ahead. If two cars finish in the same round and finish on the same space, the winner is the one in the spot closest to the race line. Slipstreaming can never be used to cross the finish line, and it cannot be used once you have crossed the finish line. Also, disregard any upcoming corners, just go as far as you can. And that's how to play the base game of Heat. And when you're ready, there are three more optional modules you can use to make this game go from good to great. The Garage module lets you draft upgrades instead of using the basic upgrades that you start with. The road and weather conditions tweak certain things around the track, and you can put it all together with a championship system, which is kind of a little mini campaign. It's pretty awesome. And all of that is in part two. Yeah, we got a two-parter. Now get off the track. We're trying to have a race. The Grouchy Nerd and master the use of just four elements. Salt, which enhances flavor, fat, which delivers flavor and texture, and acid, which balances. <laughs>